every part of us. Take over every part, God. Holy Spirit, come and show us your ways, your ways. Because we want to live our lives for you. We want to live our lives fully surrendered to you. glorify your name cause worthy is your name worthy is your name Father God I just pray for any people here God that are just finding a heart to press into you, God. And, you know, this week has been super difficult for me, you know, and, and sometimes when you're stepping out, God, you know, the enemy comes to try and distract you with chaos, confusion, stress, strife. You know, th- two days ago, I couldn't even walk. My back was in agony. I was like, how am I going to drive to get here? But I just knew I had to be here because God has just done something in my heart this week. He's been speaking to me and I I really believe God's going to break out today. Um, I can't explain it. I feel like, I feel like I'm at, there's something bubbling away and he just keeps speaking to me and I'm just, I just want, I just want to encourage you just to, whatever's going on in your life, you know, some of us have got more things going on than the others, but just to completely to surrender to God and give it to him. And when we say give it to him, it's actually give it to him, not go, I'm going to put it in the in tray, but then I'm going to take it back out the in tray tomorrow. Just surrender it to him because that's what I had to do this week because I didn't know how the week was going to turn out. Our keyboard player has really hurt his foot and we had no bands and it was, it was just things just coming to rob us of our joy of being here. And um, we just got to press into God because... He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy is his name, Jesus. And I just really, I just don't want anyone to miss this moment. You know, his presence is here. He's he's, he's here. (laughs) And um, I just thank, I am so grateful that I know Jesus. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And let's just worship him for him. We're worshiping him for him. So let's just give him the praise that he deserves. Amen. my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name and now my shame is gone I stand amazed in your love undeniable your grace goes on and on thank you God and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name worthy is your name Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. 
Thank you, God. The powerful name it is. Things have to move at the name of Jesus. <laughs> Nothing is impossible for him. possible for God. 
When I, that song means a lot to me because miracles really do happen. I've seen them in my own family. Three years ago, my son had a tumor in his body that was took away in six days. From, uh, we seen the oncologist and he did a second scan. There was not even a speckle. The tumor completely disappeared. So when I sing that song, praise God. Do you know, God has done so many amazing things, you know. Even in my own life, God, you know, the enemy has tried to take me out when I was young. Tried to, you know, I, I've, I've had so many encounters where I've nearly lost my life from being a baby, you know, being diagnosed with lupus. You know, I've got still got things going on, but I know God's faithful. And, you know, when my son was diagnosed, I, it really shook me. And my husband said, you know what, Ruth, we've got to stand firm. And we did, it, it, you know, it wasn't easy, you know? I didn't like, oh, it's all sorted. But I chose to stand, and for six days solid, we prayed, God, we give our son to you, and we pray, God, that you will just, whatever your plan is, God, whatever, we just trust you with him, and we give him to you, and Lord, and he just took that away. The consultants were gobsmacked. They had no explanation. And, you know, he was discharged from oncology and everything, and, God's just amazing. Sometimes we just have to come to God just as we are. We just need to sit at his feet and say, Lord, take this, God. You know, we try and work everything out ourselves so many times. I'm so guilty of that. But I'm learning that, you know, to trust in him and just give things to him. So um, I just want to encourage you, like, just to come to God, just to sit at his feet. You don't, this doesn't have to be a big... Just like, God, I come to you. I just want to sit at your feet. I want to drink from the cup in your hand. I just want to feel your heartbeat, God. Because when you come to God, he just fills you with his presence. And he gives you that peace that passes all understand. There's sometimes situations that we don't always understand that are hard. So I just want to, if you've got stuff going on, just encourage you. So we sing this song, just to sit at the Lord's feet and just take him in. And I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. The more I love you, I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heartbeat, his love is so deep, it's more than I can stand, I'm melting your so in 
your peace is overwhelming. I want to see at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heartbeat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can say. I melt in your peace, so overwhelm me, Lord. We want to draw closer, take us closer. Help us not to be too busy, like Martha. Help us to be like Mary, tuck it all in. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Your love is unconditional. Your love is so beautiful. There's nothing we can do to make you love us any less because you love us and we love you. I want to see at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your It's too complicated for you, God. We just need to come to you just as we are. And you'll work it all out. The more I seek you, the more I find you.
Keep singing that for a few moments. Show us your glory, Lord, in this place.
just give you all the glory, Jesus. Lord, we take our eyes off every distraction, every scheme of Satan to take our attention, our focus. And Lord, we choose to keep our eyes on you. There is none like you, so wonderful, so glorious, so gracious, quick to forgive, slow to anger. Lord Jesus, we run into your arms this day. And I just sense the Lord just touching people right now. Just receive that, just receive that, just receive that. And just as we were singing, show me your glory. I just want us to carry that on for a few moments. I believe the Lord is touching people in a fresh way. Some of you have been oppressed by the enemy this week, attacked, caught up in situations where you don't know how you've ended up there. But I believe the Lord is just setting people free today, right now. We're hungry, Lord. We're thirsty. Lord, we want to see your glory. Show us, Lord. Show us. Lord, we don't want to step into the summer. Lord, we don't want to step into what you have for us without your presence, without your glory. So let's just sing for a few moments. Show us your glory, Jesus. Lord, with your grace. Show me your glory. Show us, Lord. manifest presence just filling the very atmosphere right now she love ombre live vendra nombre live vende sini lombre live dista sana ganombre live vende she love ombre live vendra lombre live venda sini lombre live vendra nombre live vende she la londre lembre live vende si la lovely nembre live vendra lombre lava bande we welcome your manifest presence, Lord. We welcome your Shekinah glory to come and live and dwell in our very atmosphere, Lord. We're hungry, we're thirsty. Even all those watching by way of live stream right now, just let his presence come and mark you, feel you. Shira lava sandre lembre live vendra nambre live vendra. She la vaste lembre live vendra. Sina lambre live vendre nembre live vinda. Sina loste sene lembre live vende re la manambre. She la lava vandre lembre live vendra lambre live. Hallelujah. I just even sense by the Spirit of the Lord right now in this atmosphere. And I just sense the Spirit of the Lord telling me to release this right now. There's someone in this place or watching by live stream where this week you've ended up in such a dark place to a point of temptation where you got to that point where Satan was tempting you to fall into the sin, the traps of the sin, but you didn't take the bait before you were about to commit that sin or fall into the trap. It was like the Lord made a way of escape for you. But you're here today in the presence of the Lord and you don't know how you even ended up there. And it was like Satan was just singing a certain tune and you were dancing to that tune. But here in the presence of the Lord, right here, right now, you're in a place where you're saying, Lord, how did I even end up there? Lord, I don't want to end up in this place. Just like in the the Lord's prayer, 
It says, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all evil. And I'm even reminded of that scripture right now. No matter how dark the temptation, no matter how far it looks that you've got yourself into that mess, the Lord will always make a way of escape for you. And Lord, I thank you right now for that person that's here right now or watching by way of live stream. Lord, I take authority right now over every trap of Satan. I declare that, Lord, every trap of Satan make you fall into his own trap. In the name of Jesus Christ, may Satan fall into his own trap. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, I declare your freedom in Jesus' name. Your freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, we refuse to dance to the tune of the devil. But Lord, we will follow the voice of the Holy Spirit alone. Lord, we will go where you want us to go. Lord, we will say what you want us to say. And we say, Lord Jesus, work on our hearts. Lord Jesus, we belong to you. And we remind the devil right now. Devil, we don't belong to you. Hallelujah. And whenever the devil is putting pressure on you, whenever the devil is attacking you, whenever the devil is leading you to darkness, I want to let you know right now, remind the devil of the cross. Remind the devil of the blood of Jesus Christ. Legally, Satan can't touch you. Legally, Satan doesn't have the power over you. And right now, in this atmosphere, and all those watching by way of live stream, Satan, we remind you of the cross. Satan, we remind you of the blood. Satan, we remind you of the resurrection of Christ. Devil, you can't have them. Devil, you can't have our children. Devil, you can't have our finances. Devil, you can't have our health. Devil, you can't have our families. Today, we bind you. We render you powerless in the name of Yeshua. By the power in the blood of Jesus. We bind you right now. And we declare the freedom of the Lord. We declare the freedom of the Lord. For who the Son sets free is free indeed. For where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom, 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 freedom. Let's just worship a little longer. Shira lava Sandra Limbrim. Come on, release that shout. Is the glory forever. Amen. Yes, Lord. For yours is, is the, the kingdom. kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. For yours, yours is the kingdom. Yours, yours is the power. And yours, yours is the glory. Come on, keep singing that a few more times. I want you to sing that louder. I want to let, listen, you need to let the devil hear you. Let your flesh hear you. Let the atmosphere hear you. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Is the kingdom yours? Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Jesus, for yours is the kingdom. Yes, Lord. Yours is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. There's none like you, Lord, for you are our deliverer. Lord, your job description is to save us, to rescue us. We thank you, Lord, for redeeming us, for saving us from temptation, from the attacks of the enemy, from the schemes of Satan. 
Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. There's none like you, for you can save us when no one else can. You can protect us when no one else can. And we choose to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, just clap your hands one more time. We serve a wonder work in God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Powerful. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to God. I just sense a shift in the very atmosphere. Sometimes we've got a breakthrough like that in prayer and intercession. And I just felt such a shift there. Glory to God. I want to say welcome. All those that are here, I can see so many faces, friends. Welcome, welcome. I want to welcome all those watching by way of live stream around the UK and those that may be watching overseas. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I believe God is going to move today in a powerful way. And I believe as even the word goes forth, many are going to be delivered, set free and edified. And that's what the word of God does. Sometimes we get so quick in a hurry to just get someone to put their hands on us or to get into ministry time. I mean, that's amazing. But the Word of God carries power. This isn't just letters on a piece of paper. This Word is breathing. This Word is alive. And I like to call it like this sometimes. The Word of God, as the Scripture says, is a sword in the Spirit. And, you know, there are many folk that read this book through a theological lens, and I'm not against that, but this book is more than a theological book. You know, when the virus is knocking on your door or when you're being attacked by the devil at 2 a.m., whether it's through a bad dream or through a temptation, that's not the time to just look at this as a theological book. It's a sword in the spirit. And as you release that sword, things get chopped, severed in the invisible realm. This is a double-edged sword. And when someone who's living close to the Lord, someone who's got a believing heart, releases the Word of God, it's a sword that goes into the very atmosphere. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you. The Word of God carries power. So even as we get into the Word today, Be just as eager to receive from God than you are when you're waiting for someone to put their hands on you. Because I don't know about you, whenever I'm getting prayer, I'm not just looking for the preacher to put his hands on me. Holy Ghost, I want you to touch me. Holy Ghost, through the scriptures, let my mind be renewed. May I be edified today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to welcome all those watching by way of live stream. Don't just watch this like an ordinary stream. Receive from God. Take everything that God has for you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God has just been doing some incredible, incredible things in the last few weeks. We've been out on the streets, the streets of Oxford Street, Soho, where the red light district is, and even Brixton, South London. And what a powerful, powerful time we've had on the street. Some of you have come out with us physically, but some of you have been praying for us from afar. And God has just been doing incredible, incredible things on the street. I believe we've got a short clip. Is that ready? If we can run that clip. We've got to be a people that our focus is on God alone. We're not here to please man. You know, it looks foolish to some people when we were going out evangelizing. Some folk were saying, oh, you shouldn't really be doing that. And what we were doing was simply going out on the streets, loving people, praying for them. Many homeless people don't have online. They don't have a cozy little home where we can be comfortably locked up in. And they need the gospel. Suicide rates have been higher than they've ever been before. Other cities around this nation are crying out. The streets are crying out. The unbelievers, they're trying to fill that void in their heart through drugs, party, and the things of the world. It's leading them to suicide. It's leading them to destruction. And ultimately, it's leading them to eternal damnation. Now I know why Satan wants to keep the church shut up. Now I know why. Because the harvest is right. It's more right than it's ever been before. It's the perfect temperature for a move of God. Listen, I don't want to just preach when everything is rosy and everything's nice. Anyone can do that. 
We've got to go beyond the flashy lights. We've got to go beyond the smoke machines. And if we haven't got the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then really we've got nothing and we'll lose a generation. Hallelujah. Just an incredible time on the streets. And one thing I noticed in the voiceover, you heard me preaching there. One thing I noticed and what I was trying to say was the harvest has been so ripe. You know, when the first lockdown hit and it seemed like many in the body of Christ were neutralized, as a matter of fact, that's the time to shine for the Christian because we are the hands and feet of Christ. And when we were in Birmingham doing some outreach, I saw something on the streets that I haven't seen before for the first time. We had friends of ours that were evangelizing with us that said they've been outreaching for 20 plus years and they saw this for the first time in 20 years. And what had happened was during the first lockdown, as we began to preach on the streets, people began to step forward. Those that are despondent, drug addicts, the broken, began to step forward, kneel down on the floor, and give their life to Jesus. We didn't ask them to do that. What you've got to understand, this isn't in the four walls of a church building where people know the setup. They know that it's at the end of the service where there's an altar call. This was raw on the streets. And I'd never seen that before. And it was that day I began to realize, now I know why Satan wants the church, not just locked down physically, but locked up spiritually. Now I know why that Satan wants the church silent concerning the preaching of the gospel. And it's because the harvest is ripe. So ripe. People are so open to the gospel. Listen, when death comes knocking on people's door... And that's really what's happened concerning the last 12 to 14 to 16 months. It's death that people are scared of. It's not just the virus. It's the effects of the virus. It's death. And we carry the good news of the gospel. I want you to turn with me right now to the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Mark chapter 15, sorry, 16, verse 15. This is so powerful. Look at this. Verse 15. And he said to them, this is Jesus speaking, any time it's written in red letters, I like to take extra notice. Why? Because my Lord and Savior spoke them words. Look at this. He said to them, go. Go. I'm going to stop there for a moment. Go. The gospel is about action. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. One thing I love about that word go is he didn't say be led or wait around or wait 10 years for you to be saved. There was an urgency. And what you've got to remember is when Jesus spoke this, these words, he was walking on the earth for 40 days. He was appearing to his disciples in different ways, different occasions after the resurrection. And when he finally got them together and he was about to ascend, these were his words. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, that word preach in the original Greek is the word caruso. It's the same word we get to be a herald. A herald is someone who announces something, someone who brings a message, someone who brings good news. And one thing I love about that word preach, which really means proclaim, caruso, it means to publicly announce. And that's one thing I really love about the Christian faith is we're not like any other religion or ideology where we just have our little club, we have our little secret gatherings, we have our little memberships, and that's it. One thing about Christians is we have something to announce. We have good news to share. And I find that profound. You know, any time you see... People of different faith on the streets, yes, they might give out leaflets. Yes, they might have a little table out. But it's always the Christians that are shouting. Hallelujah. 
When it comes to worship, it's always the Christians that are the most passionate, loud, rejoicing, big smiles, dancing. See, we as children of the Most High God, we've got something to announce. Just keep your eyes on me. Don't get distracted. We've got good news to declare, to share. You know, in most faith and people, and we have conversations on the streets, a lot of people from other faiths, they don't have a testimony. Okay, a lot of them have been spoon-fed from when they were one year old, what their religion is, and really it's become their identity. So, you know, it's, it's not necessarily something that they've encountered. It's more something that they've been spoon-fed and forced into. Are you catching this? But with Christians, we've got a story to share. We've got a testimony. Furthermore, we have been commissioned by our Lord and Savior to go and proclaim, preach, announce the gospel, which means the good news to all the world. And this is where I want to encourage you. We as a family, because this is what we are. We're a community living in revival. We're not waiting for it. We're living for it. Where souls are being saved. Demons are being cast out. The sick are being healed. Tents are going up. There's an equipping, a mobilization for the harvest of souls. We are living in revival. That's what I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one thing I love about the mandate that we have been given by our Lord and Savior. It's not called the great idea. It's not called, you know, the great recommendation. It's the great commission. We've been commissioned by our Lord to go. We've been commanded to go. And this is where I want to encourage you that we can't take our eyes off the harvest. Of course, it's Jesus first, number one. We ourselves have to be revived first before we want to see revival out there. We ourselves have to first encounter Jesus before we can tell others about him. But I want to encourage you. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. Hallelujah. And in a few weeks' time now, it's only three weeks to go where we will be having the 10 revival 2021. The 10 is going to go up, and I'm so, so excited. I think there's been a real buzz now about this because we were out on the field there on Wednesday last week, and we were just praying, praying, praying on the field. And just we could sense the presence of the Lord, just an open heaven over that land. And I've got something exciting to share, actually. On July the 18th, which is next Sunday, we won't be having service as normal here. What we're actually going to be doing, we're actually going to be meeting on the field where we'll be having the tent revival. And the reason why we're meeting on that field is to pray. We want to pray on that ground. I just really strongly felt this, that let's, let's go out of the box. Let's take our family, our community on the field. We're in this together. We're, it's not just about one preacher or one man. It's all of us that God wants to use. It's all of us that God hears. It's all of us that God is mobilizing. And I strongly felt that let's go to that field. Let's go there and as a body, as a family, as a community, let's pray. Let's pray for revival on this land. Let's pray for this very atmosphere to be soaked in the blood of Jesus, in the presence of God. And I believe it's going to be a powerful, powerful time, but we're not just going to pray. We want it to be a family vibe. So, you know, we're going to have a picnic as well. So I encourage you, bring your blankets, bring chairs, you know, and just come along. I believe my wife will share more on this later on, but we're going to have a bit of a bring and share. But I'm so, so excited to meet on that field and pray. All of us will be praying in a powerful way. And we don't have to be religious you know, we don't just have to have church as normal in the normal structure all of the time. We're a book of Acts church. We're a book of Acts army. We're contending for a move of God in this nation. And I think that's been one of the issues where so many get caught up in structure where they'll put God around their schedule rather than putting their schedule around God. Really, sometimes you've got to rearrange the whole thing. Sometimes you've got to throw the whole schedule out of the way and say, God, we're hungry. God, we're thirsty. You say it, and we'll do it in Jesus' name. So I'm so looking forward to pray. And when we do meet next week, I believe it'll only be two weeks away 
from that point. And we've got people coming from Ireland, Scotland, up and down the country. And the reason why we're putting this on isn't for ourselves. Okay, to, to put it frankly, we don't have to do this. These events, number one, they take a lot of effort. There's big teams of volunteers that we need. Our whole team gets stretched. Remember, we're not doing this for a one-nighter. We're not doing this for a free-nighter. This is a night of contending, believing for revival, worshiping God in the atmosphere of heaven. And we're so, so excited. We're putting this on for the nation. And that's why we're making it free admission. We want the youngsters coming in. Last year, we had busloads from Teen Challenge come in. Teen Challenge, for those that don't know, is a ministry focused on rehab, rehab and those that are addicted to drugs and that sort of thing. So, I mean, we want to make it accessible to as many people as possible. So we're just, the buzz is in the air. We're just ramping it all up now. We're letting people know, family members, you know, for those watching this by way of live stream, I want to personally invite you, don't miss the tent revival. I know that there are other amazing events that go on, whether they're worship festivals, whether they're Christian performances, but there's nothing really like this where the tent goes up and there's a contending for revival in the nation. And I believe that it's going to be profound, and we believe the hand of God is on it. That's why we're putting it all on the line. That's why we're letting God stretch us, and that's why we're taking the step of faith, because we believe that it's the perfect temperature for a move of God. We've got the promo, we want to quickly run. If we've got the tent revival video, let's quickly run. This year shall be a year where we shall remember where the tent went up and many were set free, many were healed and many gave their life to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So we're so, so excited, guys. For those that do wish to get involved, some of you may want to volunteer in different ways. I encourage you to get in touch with the ministry, email us, get in touch with us. For those that want to get involved, we, I do believe we're going to have camping as well for some people that may wish to do that. Otherwise, there's loads of accommodations around and all of that. But I encourage you to register, get there. It's going to be incredible. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with me, just turn with me right now to the book of Matthew chapter 6, and I'll take it from verse 19. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 6, and I'll take it from verse 19. And again, these are written in red letters, the words of our Lord and Savior. Do not lay up yourselves treasures on the earth where moth and rust and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21. For where your treasure is, there is also your heart. See, I want to encourage you, friends. We want to give you an opportunity to give your tithes, your offerings, and also to sow into the harvest of souls. See, one thing about Walking Like Jesus Ministries is our focus is souls. It's an outward focus to reach the harvest. If we're not doing it and we're preaching in churches or in services, we're equipping and you know, encouraging people to do the same. So, you know, we want to give you an opportunity to sow seeds. Some of you may want to specifically sow into the tent mission. Some of you may want to sow into the, the trailer stage that we're currently working on. But whatever you sow into in this ministry, I want to encourage you, it's going towards souls. Some of you may not have the time to always be out on the streets to evangelize. Some of you may not have the team, or some of you may not be in a position where you're a preacher per se, but I want to encourage you that this is a practical way for you to help us push further, to help us preach further, to help us do the things we do. Obviously, we're making the tent revival free admission as well, and without going into the details of the different costs and all of that, but we're doing it by faith. 
you know, and we want to give you an opportunity under no compulsion, under no pressure, but we want to give you the opportunity to sow seed into the mission field. You know, at the end of the day, where you're treasure is, that's where your heart is. If you're passionate about souls, evangelism, I want to encourage you that this is good soil to sow into. The soil is important. You know, we can put our resources in all these different places, you know, and, and to put it frankly, some ministers just have it piled up you know, saving it for when revival comes or waiting to make the right move. With us, when God speaks, we put it all on the line and we act upon it, you know. So I want to encourage you to, you know, sow into the harvest. And you're not giving to a man. You're not just giving to a, a charitable organization, even though we are a registered charity. Our focus is the advancement of the Christian faith. Our focus is the preaching of the gospel, whether that's on the streets, whether that's through utilizing the media, or whether that's being radical and putting tents up even when some churches are still closed. We want to be radical. We want to put it on the line because I believe that's what the gospel is all about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask Ruth and the team to just come up and play with me. But if you're in a position where you do wish to help us and you want to sow in right now, I want to encourage you to do that. You may be watching this by way of live stream right now, and you may wish to support us. You may wish to give to the ministry. You can do so by heading over to walkinglikejesus.org slash giving. And then the options are there, whether you want to give by bank transfer, by check, or even through the online form. And for those that are taxpayers, you can also tick gift aid, where it will help us even further. But I encourage you to do so. And those that are in this place, there'll be envelopes, I believe, under your seats. We encourage you to fill out the details nice and clearly. And I encourage you, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You know, and what we are receiving from God, the treasures that are being stored up for us, for the souls we're reaching, for the moves we're making, we're putting out a net to reach a harvest of souls. As we are doing that, great shall be your reward. We can't do it alone. It's the body of Christ. It's the family of God that comes with us side by side to say, we are going to support you. We are going to stand with you. And we want to say, may God bless you and reward you as you join your faith with us, as you join your heart with us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So just go ahead and just fill out the details. The ushers will come around in a few moments. Ruth and the team, if you want to just play, you could just minister to us as we do that in Jesus' name. And then I want to pray over everyone that gives today and just sows in. One thing for certain is when you put the things of God first, God takes care of you. He looks after you. Remember, the employer isn't your source. Your job isn't your source. The heavenly Father clothes the birds of the air. He feeds them. He is your source. So I encourage you. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray in just a moment.
right now I just pray for everyone that has given today all those that are standing with us all those that are watching by way of live stream and those that are here father as they sow into souls today as they sow into the advancement of the kingdom of the gospel being preached Lord I pray that Lord everything that we are receiving from you may they also receive may it be accredited to their heavenly account as they are supporting us as they are pushing us further as they are helping us to do what we are doing for your name's sake Lord be upon them strong be upon their finances strong be upon their families with your anointing your blessing and your presence in Jesus mighty name Hallelujah. Let's just worship for a few moments before Tanya comes and releases the word. Oh Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Oh Lord, make me a house, make to pray, oh Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, oh Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. I want to seek your face, seek your face, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out, the fire on my altar never burn out, the fire on my altar never burn out, make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire in my altar never burn out. The fire in my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. The fire in my altar never burn out. The fire. us a house of prayer, Lord. Let that fire on our altar never burn out, Lord. Do what only you can do in this place today, Father, even for those watching by way of live stream. Lord, make us a house of prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, where our heart breaks for what breaks yours.
That's it. Just begin to speak to him. Say, Lord, I don't want to leave this place the same way that I came in, Lord. I want to receive everything that you have for me. And maybe that fire has just been dwindling out a little bit. But just say, Lord, let that fire on my altar never burn out, Lord. Touch me with your fire, that heavenly fire that cannot be quenched, that will not be burnt out. Touch me. Fill me to overflow. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Let everything burn with the fire of God for you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, just stay in that place, stay in that place, Lord. I thank you for every person here today and watching by way of live stream, Lord. That you will touch them into the deepest parts of their lives, of their being. Lord, you know their situation, you know what they're facing right now. Thank you that not one person will leave this place the same. Thank you, Lord, that you've chosen us, Lord. We're so honored. We're so thankful that you would choose us. Who are we, Lord, that you are mindful of us? Now, there are billions of stars in the sky, yet you know them by name, and you know who I am, Lord. Father, we thank you. We're so grateful. We're so honored. And we're here because we want to show you that we love you and we're thankful and we love you. We want more, Lord. We're not satisfied with where we're at, Lord. We want more. We want more of you. So just touch each and every person right now. Let that hunger develop, a hunger for more of the things of you, a hunger for more of a prayer life, a hunger for more intimacy with you, a hunger for more souls, a hunger to be all that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Just stay in this place of hunger as I'm going to just bring the word today. You can still be in. I want you in this place throughout the whole time. When you are hungry, God will touch you. And hunger draws on the anointing. Hunger moves the heart of God. So I'm not one of those people that you can do what you want when you're preaching. As long as you receive all that God has for you, you just stay in that place. Be receptive. Be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. We, We don't put no limitations here. Some people laugh, cry, weep, want to fall on, the, uh, fall on the floor, be on the floor, lie prostrate. You let God touch you. Here is a safe place where God will do what he needs to do in you. Amen. This is like the operating theater. And sometimes he might hit you in a funny place and it might make you do something. But allow God to do what he needs to do in you today. Amen. Amen. So take a seat, but stay in this place. Stay in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. We love you. We're so grateful for you. Well, I'm so happy to, hallelujah, yeah. Let's give glory. Thank you, Lord. I'm so happy to bring the word to you today. I know that many of you are excited for the 10 o'clock news tonight. No, I'm joking. You're all excited for football, hey? Yeah? Yeah, we're cheering on England. England. (laughs) Cash has a very funny way of saying England. I've been trying to copy it. I can't do it as well as you. So we might let him share later. (laughs) We'll get you to be the pundit, the commentator for tonight. Um, But yeah, we're really excited. And you know, one thing, not to really preach about football at the moment. I'm not really a football fan. But come on, everyone's a football fan right now. But we're cheering on England because I feel... Out of England, I'm like, I want us to have something back in England. We've had the best missionaries. We've had revival. You know, we have the best history. 
And I really feel it's time to make England proud again. We've gone out and told the other nations and we've done well, but I think it's time for England. And just out of observation, I was saying, we, everyone's been talking about how well England's playing, and I don't know anything about England. But um, football, should I say? I know England. Um, but when you look back at the previous generations, like, um, maybe I won't mention names, but previous generations where football was really associated with scandal and adultery and drugs and just being, you know, scandalous. And I look now at this generation of footballers, and it seems like the footballers of this new generation are married, they've got kids, they're family men, they're faithful, and I really commend that for them. And I think it's very evident in the fruit of their game at the moment, of how they're playing. So I think you know, character and integrity plays a lot, and I feel it's also a representation as a, almost a correlation of this generation of preachers and ministry, where there are, this generation is all about authenticity, okay? And if we could take that as an example, in ministry is God is looking for authentic men and women of God who are what you see is what you get, where you're not one way on the pulpit and one way on the street, so you're one way here and then behind the scenes you're living like anything else. You know, God wants us to live that authentic life on a pulpit, off a pulpit, at home, in front of the crowds. And I really feel that there's a bit of a correlation in that. So yeah, we, we are excited for England tonight. So yeah, go England. Woo, we're cheering you on. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but yeah, today I really just wanted to share, I know most of you know my testimony, but I just wanted to share just briefly, uh, for those of you that don't know, that I didn't have my dad around when I was younger. My dad left before I was born. So I faced a lot of rejection. I didn't feel loved. My mom didn't really know how to look after me either. So I was very rejected as a child. And growing up, I didn't feel I was loved. Even as a five-year-old, I knew that I was not loved. Now, my mom obviously loved me, but she couldn't give me that care and affection that a, a, a five-year-old, a child needs, nurturing, safety, and a mom and a dad, you know, the nuclear family. That's what children need. And Fathers play such a key role in the household. So I didn't really know my father growing up. He left before I was born. And that affected me massively. Because I could have had a mum and dad and still had issues. But when a father's not playing an active role in the household, it actually affects your atmosphere, your dynamic, your community, your culture. And I, I have something here that I wanted to read to you. But our relationship with our earthly father is so crucial that without a positive one, it affects the child's perception negatively to understand between right and wrong. Fatherless homes account for 67% of youth suicides, 71% of high school dropouts, 85% of behavioral problems, 85% of youth offending and imprisonment, and 90% of homeless and runaways. And that's not even mentioning the gang crime and the drugs and all of that. So in the same way as we're disconnected to our heavenly father, when we're disconnected from our earthly father, those statistics I've just read to you are the cause and effect. In the same way, when we're disconnected from our heavenly father, we start questioning who we are, why we're here, what's my value? And that's what happened to me. I was a young girl. I, from the age of five years old, I used to cry myself to sleep, wondering why my dad left, why he didn't love me. I knew that my mom couldn't really care for me. And as a five-year-old, I would cry myself to sleep, crying out to a God, to an unknown God, that God, if you're around there, send me my dad. I just want my dad, and I want him to come and take me away from all of this, thinking that knowing my dad would be the answer to all of my problems. And fathers do play a big role, and that's why I even want to encourage and exhort every father here, even um, our singles and those that are going to be fathers in the future, and those watching on the live stream now, is you have a big responsibility in this generation. And not only to your own children, but to those that God brings around you. I believe that Christians, men and women, are going to be mothers to the motherless, fathers to the fatherless. And as we re receive the love of the Father, we can go out and love a lost and dying world. 
And it's that which people need. They, they're looking for love. They're looking for acceptance. They're looking for community. When you take, you know, gang culture, for example, they're looking for that brotherhood. They're looking for that family. And often it's the olders that will take on the youngers. And it, again, it's that same kind of fathering. That, that's what our young people are looking for. So that's what happened to me. I was a young child. I was five years old, six, seven, and I was crying out for my dad. I had this hole in my heart, and it was a void that I thought that my dad would come and he would fix that. But my dad never really came. When I was 10 years old, my mom met somebody, and I thought, oh, great, this is going to be the dad that I've never had. And long story short, sadly, he was an alcoholic, and he was abusive. So I thought that I was going to have a dad, and I had this kind of high standard of what a dad should be, and then this man came along and was just everything that a dad shouldn't be. So I was already, like, down, and it made me go even lower. And as a young person, I was 10, 11 years old at this point, and I was, I was troubled, you, know, you look at young people and they may be off the rails, they may be, you know, with behavioral problems, but look at this list. When the father isn't praying and uh, playing an active role in the house, those statistics are the things that, well, they are the effects of that. And that's why I know there are some people here, you've had to be the mother and the father. And that's not the way it's supposed to be, but God will give you the grace and strength to do everything that you need to do. But it's God's heart that this is why my heart is to empower Christians to be able to walk in their God-given destiny and to be all that God's called them to be because you want to flourish in your relationship with God. But even in your marriage, this is why I'm so, I'm so passionate about godly marriages that as much as we're in ministry and we do many things around the world, I say to my husband that if we're not okay, the ministry isn't okay. So before I even care, as much as I love our church and I love our ministry, but before I even bother with that, my main priority is my home, my marriage and my family. And this is where it's almost like we've lost the mark of what, what our success is like. Uh, Pastor Daniel was sharing last week of what true success is. When you know the love of the Father, when you receive his love and you're content from that, you're not looking to your spouse for them to fulfill you and give you everything that you think you need because everything you need is in him. It's the overflow. And when you've received love from him, you're, not, you're now not looking to your spouse for them to love you, for them to give you everything that you need, because I've got everything that I need. But now, rather than me looking at myself of what I can get, I'm now looking at my spouse, my husband, of how I can love him, how I can bless him, how I can serve him, and vice versa. Because that's when you start having conflict, is when you have two wounded people coming together trying to fulfill that void when it's only God who can give that to you. So I was a young person, and um, I was 10, 11 years old, and I didn't have any reason to live. I felt that I was unloved, I was rejected, I didn't know who my, uh, my dad was, my mom really couldn't look after me, family wasn't really there for me, friends, you know, they come and go. And I started meddling with drugs and drink, and I was 12, 13 years old, getting in with the wrong crowds, and when you're, you know, taking drugs and you're drinking and stuff, you're opening your out, yourself up to spirits. You, they call them spirits. You literally can open yourself up to spirits. And I started hearing voices, whispers of the enemy saying that my life wasn't worth living, that if I was to die, nobody would care, and that the world would still go on. So shortly after my 13th birthday, I attempted to commit suicide, and I did. And sadly, my mom didn't call for an ambulance when she should have. And I was there lying, dying in our house until the next morning. And my mom tried to wake me up for school and she couldn't wake me up. And my school had called to say, Tanya needs to come into school. And if she doesn't, you know, we'll have to take court action. And my mom said, well, I'm trying to wake her up. But she took all this stuff last night, but she's not really waking up. And they said, well, you need to call for an ambulance. So long and short of it, she didn't really know the severity of it. Although if anybody takes any type of overdose, you would know to call an ambulance. I hope you do. If you don't, you do now. And um, they called for an ambulance straight away. An ambulance came with police cars, and they cordoned off the house as a crime scene. I was taken straight out of the house into the hospital uh, as I was on my way to the hospital. 
They were literally saying, we don't think she's going to make it. But they put me in the hospital, and they were pumping my stomach, putting air into me. And um, they straight away had to put me on a life support machine with um, tubes up and down my nose and my throat to give me air. And I was in a coma. And that's where I'd be in a coma for three days. And the doctors wrote me off. They said that I wasn't going to make it. They, they got my family to prepare for the worst because they said Tanya has taken this overdose and it's so bad for the amount of time that it took from when she took the overdose to when uh, medical services were called, the lack of oxygen to her brain. She could be severely brain damaged. She could be in a vegetative state where she'd need round-the-clock care, um, round care, paralyzed, all that type of stuff. So you can imagine they were saying that Tanya is not going to be the same Tanya that you once knew. So they were preparing my family for the worst. So my family are calling in my relatives from Canada, getting people you know, that I haven't seen in years coming around me. And those people weren't there when I was taking my overdose. Nobody was there. Nobody in that moment said to me, God has a plan for your life. Jesus loves you. What are you doing? You're worth more than this. God's got a plan for you. I didn't hear none of that. And in that moment, I could have gone into eternity. And there I'd be, my name on a tombstone, a speck of dust. It says our life is but a vapor. A short-lived life, like many of our young people, many people throughout this pandemic that they haven't spoken about. They talk about all the, the COVID cases, but they don't talk about alcoholism. They don't talk about the domestic abuse. They're not talking about the suicides. They're not um, showing those statistics. There's a lost and dying world out there. And when we are so introspective of ourselves and what I can get, and oh Lord, I'm still, I'm still dealing with this and you're not giving me that. And we're thinking about ourselves. There's a whole world passing us by. More going into eternity. One moment we're here, the next we're gone. One moment we're 10 years old, 20, 30, you're 60, 70, and that's it. Life is but a vapor and what have we done with it? So I'm there in the hospital and there's the, the, the doctors speaking death over me, saying that Tanya's not going to make it into eternity, never to be heard of again. We know where I would go. But by God's grace, they were about to turn the machines off. They were telling my family, we're going to turn the machines off. She's not going to make it. But God had a plan for my life, just like he does for each and every one of you. For those of you that are here today, it was orchestrated by God that you would be here. For he knows every day, every moment of your life is orchestrated. For those of you watching by live stream, don't change it. God has you on here right now. But they spoke death over me, but God had a plan for my life. Amen. And they were going to turn the machines off. And as they were about to turn the machines off, I began to make an independent response. And I was breathing for myself. So that was a miracle within itself. And I survived. I got out of the coma, and it took me a few days to come around. I was angry with the medical professionals. Like, why would they try and help me? And then again, as soon as I heard that the enemy came in, it's just their job. They're not doing it because they want to. They're doing it because they have to. So again, that rejection, the self-hate, all of that coming in. And I was only 13 years old, just turned 13. And because my mom didn't call for medical services straight away, I got taken into foster care. And they wanted to put me into a mental health hospital because anybody that tries to take their life, they deem as crazy. But I wasn't crazy. I was helpless. I was suicidal. I had no hope. Like so many people out there, the people that we know, our friends, our families. And just on a side note, it's those reasons why we're putting this tent on. It costs so much money. It is so much work. It is stress. But again, we're not doing it for our own pleasure, if anything, I really said to Daniel when we came back from America, I was like, I don't, like, we don't have to do it. Like, really, seriously, we don't have to do it. We can, you know, relax and all that. I was kind of encouraging him, saying, we don't need to if you don't want to. And God started confirming that, no, we need to. And it's like, okay, Lord, you know, it's your will, not ours. But we're doing it so you can bring your family members, those friends, that colleague, that person that you know who needs salvation, who needs help. That whatever it takes, even if you've got a sacrifice to go and pick them up and drop them and bring them, those that are hungry are going to come. And we want to bring unsaved people. It's not just another Christian party. We mean business. We're in this to change the world. 
And if it costs everything we've got, we're going to do it. We've given our marriage, our life, our home, our family, everything into this. Because there's no plan B. It's, it's God and nothing else. We're here. We're married simply just to fulfill God's will through our lives. We love each other, yes, but it was that that brought us together, that, hey, you're on a mission, I'm on a mission. You want to change the world? I want to change the world. Let's do it together. Two are better than one. Amen? So I got put into foster care, and when I was there, I was still suicidal. I didn't really have a hope. Like, I didn't have a hope. I didn't know what my future held. And my foster carers, they took me into their home. They had just had a young girl who had beat up their daughter. <laughs> so their daughter was about 20 years old, and they had this like reckless teen. Like you think of kids that are in care, they're like the worst of the worst. They'll give you attitude. They might, <laughs> they might even beat your child up. Um, but she tried to push their daughter down the stairs. So my foster mom was like, right, that's it. No more girls. Give me boys. I'm not dealing with these girls and their aggressive, you know, cattish behavior. And uh, social services called my foster mom and said, hey, like, we've got this girl. She's suicidal. She's been on a life support machine. She's just come around. Would you be willing to take her? And she was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. Nope. But she felt God say, pray over it. So she prayed over it, and God said, take this girl. So she was like, okay, Lord, I'll take her. You know, that's fine. So I got to their home. And I remember her opening the door and coming to our house. And she was a, a Portuguese woman. So she's got this beautiful, exotic uh, look about her. And she's physically very beautiful to me. But it was more than beauty. When I saw her, it was like I could see this light shining behind her. Now, we live in England, and it wasn't a sunny day. It was very cloudy and gray. So it definitely wasn't the sun shining from behind her. But I remember seeing that thinking, there's something different about her. And she hugged me. And as, any, as somebody who had never really had a lot of love, had a lot of affection, my mom rarely hugged me growing up. I didn't have a, that type of affection. And she hugged me, and I felt this, like, comfort of, like, whoa, like, you know. And I knew there was something different about her. And I went to live with them, and it was, it was great. So I was there for about two, three weeks. And as I said to you, they wanted to put me into a mental health hospital because anybody that tries to commit suicide is crazy. So I went into this thing for a day just to see how it was. And I tell you, that wasn't the place for me. They had scars on their neck from where they tried to hang themselves, some of these young people. And not only did they try and do it once, it didn't work. So then they tried to do it again. And they had scars on their arms, and they were rocking in corners. They were high on medication. And I was there just thinking, like, I'm not crazy. I was just crying out for help. Like, this, this isn't where I belong. So I went back to my foster mom that day, and I said, I don't want to go there. Like, I, I don't feel that's for me. And she said to me, she said, Tanya, if you don't feel you need to go there, you don't want to go there, you don't need to. I don't think you're crazy. And I never had that. I never had anyone speak life over me of when someone says that you're something that no, you're not. I was brought up that if, my, if anyone would say anything to my mom about me, it was like, that's what you are. If they would say I was ugly, I was fat, I was this, I was that, I was naughty, that was the truth. And my mom would just take it and say, okay. But I was never taught anything of empowerment or life. So that first time when she said that, I don't think you're crazy, it was like, What? My whole family thinks I'm crazy. Everyone around me thinks I'm crazy. They think I'm going to be, uh, uh, you know, a homeless runaway, 16 by t uh, pregnant by the time I'm 16. You know, all those things that are spoken over you before you've even gone out into the world. And that night, she brought me downstairs. And I came down, and she was talking to me. And she had a conversation with me that changed my life for all of, a, of eternity. And she said, Tanya... She said, your life is not your life to take. She said, your life belongs to God, and God has a plan and a purpose for your life. She said that he knew me before I was in my mother's womb, and that if I had died, I would have gone to hell because I didn't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And the next thing that she said to me is what I want to touch on today, but she said to me that God is the father that I'd never had. Amen. And I'm sitting there thinking, has she read my diaries? Because the police, when they came in and um, cordoned off the house, they took everything, diaries as um, uh, evidence, you know, because it potentially was a death scene. And I'm thinking, has she seen my diaries? Because all the time, dear diary, you know, to my dad, I used to write letters to my dad. I would just write to him. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, she's seen them. And then I'm, I'm working out, she hasn't seen them. How, how could she have seen them? 
how, how does she know that I want my dad? And she's talking to me about a father who will never leave me nor forsake me. A father that even if I meet my earthly father will still let me down, will still fail me, will still come short. But here she is telling me about this heavenly father who loves me. A heavenly father who wants to wash me clean, give me new life. A father that loved me so much that he gave his son to die for me. And I was like overwhelmed. It was like she was talking to me and I was just feeling like eternity. I can't explain it. She was saying so much to me, speaking such life. She was telling me that God spared my life and that he was going to use me to travel around the world and share my story with so many people. To this day, I've I've shared my story with around 870,000 people around the world. And that's a testament. Who am I? I'm just some person from West London. But by the grace of God, through traveling, through the media, through TV, so many people have heard my story. And they too now have a reason to live. They now have a purpose. And I discovered who my father was. And that's what it is. When we go out into a broken world, we can't go being broken ourselves. Because there was a void in my heart that only God could fulfill. And it's the same that he wants to do in us, in you and in me. We have to receive the love of the father before we can go out and love a lost, broken, and dying world. Amen. We need to know God as our father and even when we, t- if we want to turn, we can turn to Matthew 27, 46. And this whole time in the Gospels, we're hearing about Jesus talking about my father, my father, my father. And for the first time, we hear in Matthew 27, Jesus referring to the father as God. And about the ninth hour, uh, Matthew 27, 45. 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That God was the word of the removal of the intimacy between him and the Father. That was him taking on the sin of the world where Father was moved out of the way and became God. And now in the same way, Jesus was rejected so that we can now be accepted. He was orphaned so that we can now be adopted into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Let's go to Romans 8. Here in Romans 8, Paul's talking about the adoption, and I I love this. I'm going to read it all, but just open your heart as you hear it. And in Romans 8 from verse 12, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you have been put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And then in verse 2, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ, and Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 14, For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Amen? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, now we can cry out, Abba, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I don't know about you. Some of you, your family may have abandoned you. Some of you, maybe your your earthly mother and father forsook you or you've had issues. But I want to let you know that you are a child of God. You now belong into the family of God. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Your royalty. Queen Elizabeth, she's amazing. She's the queen. But you're royalty. You're kings and queens on the earth. You're seated in heavenly places, as you heard me share a couple of weeks ago. You are worth so much. You are precious. You are so precious. If God looks after the birds, yet he cares for you, how much does he love you? You are so loved. You are so loved that he sent his only son to die for you. Look at what God's brought you from. To where you are now. You're still standing. You're still here to tell the story. And God is not finished with you yet. 
Romans 8 and verse 18, I love this scripture, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter what you've been facing. The glory that's about to be shone through you. Amen. And yes, that talks about when we stand before him in eternity with nothing missing, nothing added, you know, standing with nothing in the way in glory. Obviously, we have our flesh in the way that sometimes can hinder those things. But I believe this scripture is also talking about things that we can achieve on the earth. For I consider that the sufferings, the things that you're tolerating at this time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And if we want that glory to be revealed in us, there has to be a response in us. A cry from the depth of us that says, Lord, I want to be all that you've called me to be. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, "I I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. It's one thing for me. When I see people that die and they go into eternity. But it's another thing that breaks my heart even more when people die and they don't fulfill their destiny. God has a calling for every one of us in whatever sphere, whatever means, whatever way it is. We have to get hungry for God. We have to read the word. We have to take it that this is what the word is uh, saying for me. These are his promises. I'm going to take it. If he says that riches and glory are ours, I'm going to believe that because, Lord, I want to take stadiums for you. I want to see a revival in our nation. Lord, I want to see the crowds that are going wild for the football. That's amazing. I'm so happy for them. But I want to see those same crowds going wild for Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. I want to hear them saying, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. But we have to be all that God's called us to be because when we're still dealing with those same things, the I, I, I. When it's all about you, you, you. And when he touches me, 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 I can touch them, them, them. Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation for the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. I could read all of this. I don't have the time. (laughs) But I'm just going to go through a few scriptures. I want to jump down to verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. The earth is crying out for more. The earth is crying out for you and for me. The earth is crying out for us to be the all God has called us to be so that we can change the nation, that we can change our world, our family, those around us. Turn with me to Luke 17. Luke 17 and verse 20. It talks about the coming of the kingdom. Luke 17, 20. Now when he was asked this by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he asked them, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. That's why I say to you, don't just be a spectator, be a partaker. Because verse 21 says, nor will they say, I see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Everything that you need is on the inside of you. God wants to use you to touch this lost and dying world. Jesus set us free from the power of sin and death, and the earth is groaning. If we've seen anything Over the last year with the pandemic, with riots, with social unrest and people crying out. They're crying out for more. They're crying out for a savior. But it's you and me who needs to point them to the savior. We're in the birth pangs. And like for those of you that know if you've had a baby before or you know what the process is. Before you have a baby, there's birth pangs, contractions. And that's what we're seeing on the earth right now. It's contractions. It's like the things are heating up. Things are amping up. And then what comes is the baby. 
And when that baby comes, you know, all the pain is gone, all the everything because of the, the, um, the joy that is released after you've had your baby. But the, what I'm saying here is that baby represents revival. That baby represents the move of God that's going to hit our nation, our world. And we are about to step into one of the greatest moves our nation and the world has ever seen. And we are part of that. Amen? And we have to know God is the Father. As freely we receive, freely we give. As we receive all that we have from him and we say, Lord, I'm laying it down. Honestly, I tell you this. It's great to work. You do what you need to do. But have a heart cry in you that says, Lord, I'll lay it all on the line for you. I'll lay my family, my ministry, my marriage, my finances, my career, my inhibitions, my dreams, my desires to be all that you've called me to be and to change this world. Because when we leave this life, what legacy are we leaving? Look how they talk about Billy Gray and Reinhard Bonnke. That's a legacy that will go on for eternity. And what was their heart? It was souls. Amen. The kingdom of God is in you, and God has called you. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. As it says in Esther, we've all been called into the kingdom for such a time as this. God didn't put you into eternity a century ago, hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago. Right here, right now. You still have breath in your lungs. You're still standing And for as long as you have breath in your lungs, you are able to proclaim the gospel. You're able to have relationship with your creator. Before I go to sleep, most nights, it's quite sobering. I lie there and I think, Lord, this this life is going to be over one day and I'm going to be with you. And it helps me to put things into perspective that what is fear of man? What is it that people think of me? If they love me, they reject me, they accept me. If they don't like me. What is it if I'm facing certain things right now, situations that I can't change? You're still Jesus. You're still seated on the throne and I'm alive. And I know you as my Lord and Savior and I'm thankful, Lord. Because I know there's people here. You go through stuff. There's situations in your life. But even if we lose it all, Whatever comes our way, we have Jesus. And that's something that the world cannot take from us. Amen? And as the world is going to get worse, things will get better for the children of God. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. It says, take joy for you've already overcome. We have the overcomer. Amen? You have the greater one in you. And there's a world to impact And God wants to reach those people through you. And it's through the love of the Father. The world is waiting for you. Whether it's in business, through music, through arts, through your ministry, through your calling, through your Facebook, through your neighbor, telling your family. He wants to reach that world around you, through you. Isn't that so honoring that, Lord, you would use me? Because it will all go one day. Our money, you know, we can invest our money into the kingdom, which I'm so passionate about. You guys know that. But it's, Lord, I want to lay it all down for you. Where there is no plan B. There's so many people who are part of this ministry. Denzel, Julia, David, all the guys, Ruth, these people, they've left where they live. They've given that up and have moved to be alongside us to serve the vision To say, Lord, I want to be a part of the end time harvest of souls. And it takes that yes, that obedience in our heart where we say, Lord, I'm willing. The Chotis travel at least four to five hours every Sunday to be here. That's hunger. Because they're saying, Lord, we're not satisfied. We want more. We want to be all that you've called me to be. And that's why there's some people, they're not here for the football today. But that shows where their heart is. And that's not to condemn them. You know, you want to spend time with your family, that's great. But those of you that are here right now, you're saying, my heart is for the kingdom. My heart is to put the Lord first. 
The football will always be there. It's great. I hope they win. And I'm happy for the UK. I honestly am. I feel after lockdown and everything, we deserve it. I felt such a happiness when I just saw everyone just cheering and just being British again. Because <laughs> we love being British. We have the very um, well-to-do side. And then we have that side where we just go at it. <laughs> but I was so happy. And we deserve it. But before all of that, I want Jesus. I want to come into the house of the Lord. I want to serve him. I want to love him. And then I can go and enjoy and watch the match. <laughs> Amen. But we have to receive his love to go out. And we could share that with our brothers and sisters. We can't be Karens going around, oh, you know, social distancing and the football. You know, love your neighbor. That's what Jesus said. You know, we, we want to see our friends happy. We want our families to be happy. We want to share that good news. That's what it's called, the good news. Jesus saves. He heals. He comes to give you eternal life. He wants to help you along the way. He's given you the, the keys and the tools to do everything that he's called you to. This is what should be coming out of your mouth 24-7. If God is for me, who can be against me? For he did not spare his own son, but delivered him up. For us all, all how shall he um, not him also freely gives us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who makes, us, who makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Come on, look at things in the perspective of eternity. It speaks of that in Romans 1. But in this perspective of things that could separate us from the love of Christ. What could separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, a bit of persecution, somebody commented on your status and they disagree with you, somebody shut you down, somebody rejected you. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, shame, peril, sword. What is that in eternity? We're going to stand before him one day. For as it is written, for your sake we were killed all day long. We are accounted for as sheep for slaughter. And I'll finish with this. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen? You're more than conquerors. You've got this because you know the one who's got you. Amen? So I want us to just stand right now as we go into a time of worship. And there's a few things I've touched on today. And I really want to encourage you to keep your relationship with God number one. Intimacy with the Lord is so important. As we know God and we know his voice and we, we receive everything that he has for us, we can begin to walk in the fullness of what God has for us. And then there's a deeper level of intimacy once we get into that, is knowing God as our Father. And he's given us the Holy Spirit. The word for the Holy Spirit is parakletos, which is counselor, helper, guide. Some of you may feel like you're in it alone, you're parenting alone. You may, you may even feel like you're alone in your marriage. But God wants to come in and break that lie. That as you receive his love, you can love your spouse. It's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. And some of you in this place, you may have not fully encountered God as that father. Maybe your childhood was robbed from you. Something happened to you as a child. Whatever, situations happen, things happen. But God's got such a plan for you. He wants you to see it through. He wants you to fulfill the call. He wants you to be all that God has called you to be. And just open up your heart to him right now. That's it. You just begin to speak to him. Say to him, say, Lord, I want to be all that you've called me to be, Lord. I want to make a difference in my generation, in this world. I don't want to leave and just be another one into eternity. I want the work that I've done on this earth to go on for eternity. I want to win souls. I want to have a passion for the lost. I want to be fruitful in my marriage. 
I want to be the mother that you've called me to be. I want to be the father that you've called me to be. I want to be a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. I want to be the, 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 the best wife that I can be to my husband. I want to be the best husband that I can to my wife. I want my house to be so filled with your love and your presence. I want to be more patient, Lord. But Lord, I can only do it with you. I don't want to go through the same things that I've been going through before, Lord. I want to receive more from you, Lord. Touch me into those deep crevices of my heart. And Lord, that void, that void that people try to fulfill through sex, drugs, relationships, through doing all this other stuff that they think will fulfill that void, sports, all these things that we place higher than you, Lord. That void that only you ever intended to fulfill. Fill it, Lord. Fill it. Every void in my heart, fill it to overflowing, Lord, where I'm so secure. My insecurities don't get to me. That's it. Just begin to cry out to him right now. Let him touch you. Speak it out to him. Every anxiety. It says, cast your cares unto the Lord. Just cast your burdens unto the Lord, for he cares for you. He cares for you. He wanted you here today. Because you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it without him. You need him. That's it. Begin to open up your heart to him right now. That's it. Touch your children right now, Lord. Your 
with that orphan spirit. This word was for you. Quickly, don't miss this right now. Stay in this atmosphere. Let's just stay in this place. Shida lava van. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. Right now. Feel right now. 
every trauma, every hurt. Go right now. Be gone right now. In Jesus' name. Trauma, gone. Trauma is going right now. Trauma, anxiety, fear, gone right now. In Jesus' name. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire right now. Fire right now. Even those watching by way of live stream right now. This is for you. There are many that have been suffering from this orphan spirit. And there is a freedom taking place right now. A deliverance right now. You're here for a reason. You've been set up by God. Amen. Just receive it. There's victory today in the spirit realm. That's what I'm sensing. There is victory right now Amen. in the spirit realm. Amen. <laughs> Freedom. Yes, Lord. Victory. Lord. Deliverance. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name right now. And just receive that. As the Lord is touching some of you, don't resist that. Receive it. Embrace it. The Lord is delivering in this place right now. Shira lava sandiri lava sondo, sina lambre live vindre, and that's it. Let him wrap his arms around you right now. Let him wrap his arms around you. He wants to be there for you, where no earthly father could have been there for you. And some of you may have even had your earthly father there, but he couldn't satisfy you, touch you, protect you, where the heavenly father can. More Holy Spirit right now. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Fresh embrace. Father's heart. Those watching by way of live stream right now, receive that. Some of you may begin to weep, tremble, shake. Just embrace that. The Lord is healing folk from trauma, abuse. That's why when someone makes a loud noise, let's not be critical. You don't know what the Lord is doing deep down in their hearts. Amen. More Holy Spirit. Touch, mark, deliver. Do what the psychologist can't do. Do what the pharmaceutical drug can't do. Do what the illegal drug substance can't do. Lord, deliver us. Mark us. Set us free today. For we run into your arms. She love am pre live vindra. She la la pre lim pre live vindra. And some of you are being delivered today, but you're also being set on fire for God. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that, but some of you are being delivered from the devil, but you're being set on fire for the things of God. Amen. It's like a deliverance, but then he's filling you. Ah, it's like he's breaking your chain, yes. but making you a chain breaker. Yes. Hallelujah. It's for a divine purpose and for a divine plan. Just receive his touch. Receive his embrace. This is between you and Jesus. Shira lava vandre limbre. <laughs> There's victory in the spirit right now. There's victory. There's a lady here who came in a neck brace and she's literally moving. God healed her neck last week. Hallelujah. She had a brace around her neck and God's healed her. God is doing amazing things here. So we're going to go into a time of praise and worship right now. And as Pastor Daniel said, where you've been delivered and now we're going to worship him for all that He's doing in you and all that He's going to do through you because He doesn't just fill you for you. He's filling you so that you can reach that world out there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just worship the Lord. Still 
that are in here right now and for those watching by way of live stream I want every eye closed right now every eye closed what is taking place in this premises right now is divine alignment I want 
the band to just keep playing with me. And I want to pray with you and for you for a few things, but there's something that's just pressing on my heart, even throughout that whole message and testimony. There are people in this place and those watching by way of live stream. God has set you up to be here through certain things that you've gone through in the week beforehand or the month beforehand. Certain things that you may have gone through in the last 12 months. Certain habits that the enemy has just pushed upon you. Just every eye closed. If you're in this place or watching by live stream and you fall into any of these categories, then I want to pray with you and for you. If number one, you don't know Jesus at all as your Lord and Savior and you don't know where you're going when you take your final breath, I want to say this, hell is a real place. There is a place called hell where you get no second chance. There is a place called hell where you're severed from the things of God. There is a place called hell where there's going to be damnation and suffering, not just for a few minutes or a 10-year sentence, but for all of eternity. But you don't have to go to a devil's hell. Heaven is also a real place. There is a place called heaven where the scripture says Jesus will wipe away every tear from your eye. Where you will be with your loved ones that gave their life to Jesus. In heaven there will be no more racism, no more killings, murders, viruses. And in heaven you will be with your maker. And today through repentance from your sin. Through running into the arms of Jesus, putting all your trust in the finished work of Calvary. Today, you can make heaven your home. Please, I don't want no one to miss this moment. Don't leave. Don't change the live stream. This is the most important part. Don't miss this. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus at all as your Lord and Savior, I'm speaking to you. Or number two, You may have once given your life to Jesus. You may have once been used by God. You may have even been baptized. You may have even heard of Jesus growing up in Sunday school. You may have even like, you know, grew up in a Christian household. Or you used to be a church girl, but something happened. Satan came in somehow, some way. It may be through a a hidden thing that no one knows about. It may be a dysfunction in your heart. It may be a a demonic spirit, whether it's an orphan spirit or whether it's an attack of the enemy that just wiped you out, dragged you back into sin. And Satan came to knock you off the narrow path. But today, through hearing the message, the testimony, today, through hearing the power of the gospel, of Jesus' saving power, You don't want to walk out of this premises or turn this stream off without giving your life to God in full surrender. If that's you, where you may have backslidden or tripped up or, you know, the enemy may be attacking you, then I want to include you in this prayer. Don't miss this. Or number three, you may just be hammered with guilt and shame and Satan has just given you mental torment and you don't know where you're going to spend eternity. You haven't got that strong relationship with God. I want to say today is that moment. Don't miss this. And if you fall into any of those categories while every eye is closed right now, I want you to just lift up your hand right now. Just lift up your hand. I see your hand here at the front. I see your hand. I see your hand at the back. Just lift up your hand right now. Even if you're watching this by way of live stream, just shoot your hand up to say as an act of faith, I want to be included in this prayer. And I want every one of you to just repeat this after me. And this isn't you parroting what a preacher is saying. This is now you having a heart to heart with Almighty God. 
Don't miss this moment. Just repeat this after me from the depths of your heart. And let's all do this. Let's encourage those that may be doing this for the first time. Just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I repent. I turn from my sin. I run into your arms. Jesus, cleanse me with your blood. Wash away the shame. Wash away the guilt. Wash away the condemnation. For I believe that Jesus, you lived for me. Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you rose again for me. And on this day, on the 11th of July, 2021, I choose Jesus. I choose you over sin, over the world, over the temptation. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. Take my life. Use it for your glory. And I receive eternal life. I receive salvation. I believe in my heart. I declare with my mouth, Jesus, Yeshua, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Now, Lord, fill me with the precious Holy Spirit right now. Every emptiness fill right now. Every void fill right now. Lord, I just lift up every single person that has chosen to make this decision today. I lift them up unto you right now, Father, as they've chosen to make this decision. Holy Spirit, seal the salvation. Seal it, Lord, that may not one be missing on that day when we stand before you. That, Lord, may every one of them hear the sounds, well done my good and faithful servant. Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord fill them right now. Fill them right now. Fill them right now. We place them into the hands of the mighty Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And Lord, I want to go one step further right now. In response to the word that Pastor Tanya released right there, Lord, I come against the orphan spirit right now. And there is a level of deliverance that's taking place in this place and a work that the Lord is doing. So I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I renounce every orphan spirit, every generational curse. I renounce you. Loose your hold from my life. Satan, I renounce you. All darkness that has tried to attack my mind. Through shame, through guilt, even through temptation. I renounce all darkness by the power in the name of Jesus. I renounce all witchcraft by the power in the name of Jesus. I renounce every foul demonic spirit by the power in the name of Jesus. And Lord, right now, I receive freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom. Let's just worship right now. For where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom right now. That's the Lord just setting you free right now. Just receive it at home. Receive it, everyone here. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do.
we can see it. The wonders I feel what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. The wonders I still what you do. Thank you, Jesus. You know, what's taken place today, I believe there's been a shift in the lives of people. And from what's taken place in this service, there's been a switch that has been flicked in hearts from death to life, from darkness to light. There's a switch that's been flicked today by the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, it's, it's the Lord at work. That foul orphan spirit that wants to creep into lives, marriages, finances, that dysfunction which ultimately leads to death, which would lead to eternal damnation, destruction. And the Lord is just touching lives all over this place. And there's a freedom that's taking place. You know, I woke up this morning and I felt the Spirit of the Lord speak to me and say, today, Pastor Tanya will share. So I looked at her and we were still half asleep getting out of bed. And I said, you're preaching today. And she said, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. And she said, but you've not given me two or three days notice or nothing. I said, no, no, you're preaching today. And as I've been sitting here and the way the Lord has delivered, the Lord knows. And sometimes we don't need to understand. We've just got to let him do what he wants to do. Sometimes it might be one of you that I say is preaching. You just won't know. You just have to be ready in season and out of season. But there was a specific word and a specific assignment that the Lord needed to release today. And there's been deliverances taking place. Lives healed, restored in Jesus' name. And you don't have to always know. Just do what the Lord is telling you to do. And I'm so, so glad that lives have been healed, restored in such a powerful way. And it's just the beginning. I believe people have found home today, even in this place, this community. I believe people have found their heavenly father today from this place today in Jesus' name. It's been supernatural. And we just give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Come on, just lift up a shout of praise to Jesus. He is the deliverer. There's no God like him. He's a mighty, mighty God we serve. And the same way he touched Tanya's life, he can do for you, for your children. There's no telling what the Lord will do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And we're so, so stirred up for for what the Lord is going to do, even in a few weeks' time at the tent mission. The way I'm actually visualizing that tent, someone gave me a prophetic word some years back and said, Daniel, you know you're going to need a bigger net for the harvest of souls in terms of, and I knew by the spirit what that was speaking to me about. It was about a shift in the mindset, limitations. You're going to need a bigger net. And I'm seeing that tent, when that big top tent goes up, I'm seeing that as a net that's being thrown in Bedfordshire for a harvest of souls. I really, really am. So next Sunday, we will not be meeting in this building. Next Sunday, we'll be meeting on the field where the tent revival will be taking place. For those that need the full address, obviously, it's on the screen right now. And we'll have ushers out there on the road, outside the gate, leading you guys in. We're going to take a different route in, but leading you guys in. 
bring your picnic. Uh, do you want to come up, Tan, quickly? Come up. We're going to, um, you know, have a little bit of a picnic sort of vibe, a bring and a share. But then we're going to pray on that ground. I believe it's holy land. Let me say this right now. The landowner has been touched by God. He's been touched by God in a powerful way. And he's just saying, Daniel, I'm so glad that you guys are doing this on our field. You've only been saved a few months. Supernatural. And at the tent mission, we will also be having baptisms taking place on the final three nights, on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And who knows? Listen, I've got that mindset, uh, and I've not even shared this with anyone, but if the, if, if the Lord starts moving in a powerful way, we will extend it. You know, and I'm not saying that we're going to right now because I don't like to manufacture things. If it's God moving, we will extend it by the grace of God, you know, and you know, and we will meet here on the Sunday after anyway. But something happens when you're in services like that. Fourth, fifth, sixth day. You know, because conferences finish after day three. You know, one day gatherings finish after day one. When you've pressed into an atmosphere like that, yeah. I know there's going to be mighty signs and wonders taking place. But please don't miss next Sunday on the field. For those that wish to volunteer... You, you need to get there, really, because we want to be in one accord. We want to all be prayerful. But, yeah, we're going to meet 4 o'clock sharp on the field in Jesus' name. So, yeah. Yeah, come. Everyone that's going to be volunteering, everyone that's got part of it, just come. Be If you are p planted in this house, we expect you there. We're still church. But because we're not just a, a, a church that's in a building, we are a church that's impacting the nation, so we're going to be on the land. We want to really pray over that land and commit it to God and spend some time as a family there as well. You know, the weather's going to be great. We'll spend time um, having fellowship. So be there. Get the information. If you're here on a Sunday, we expect to see you there next Sunday, 4 o'clock. Any information that you need, even if you need a lift, for those of you that do take the bus or anything, from Milton Keynes Station, the coachway, we will get you there. So whatever way you need to get there, we'll help you. Just let us know. And we're excited. So amen. Have a blessed week and we'll see you there next week. And if you just gave your life to Jesus for the first time today, please come and see Denzel, who's there. Just wave your hands in the white t-shirt. We have a gift for you and we want to help you with these next steps as well. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. This year shall be a year where we shall remember where the tent went up and many were set free, many were healed and many gave their life to God. Hallelujah! <laughs>